Good morning. I'm Chaplain Kim. I serve at 35th ADA Brigade. We Common Ground uh, Chapel focuses on how to build God's kingdom in this year. So let me quickly uh, go overview about the God's kingdom. God created heavens and earth, all living creatures, and Adam and Eve to build God's kingdom. And there was an obstacle. If you will look at the Genesis, there was a Satan in Genesis. And the Satan and God's kingdom cannot go together. Even though the Bible doesn't mention all the details about the Satan, that Satan's origin, the Bible seems to teach that Satan is a created being who turned against God and embraced evil. If you look at Revelation and Jude, those are two important passages and both indicate that Satan is an angel who is responsible, responsible for leading a group of fellow angels in rejecting God's authority. As a result, they were removed from heaven and throw, thrown down to earth, where they have now given themselves to making war against seed of the woman, God's people. To build God's kingdom, God has to cast out the Satan from the Garden of Eden. And then God, after he created Adam and Eve, he gave them the one mission. What was it? Of course, there are many missions. To cast out the Satan, he gave them one mission, not to eat the fruit of a tree in the middle of a garden. By obeying God's command, the Satan cast out from the Garden of Eden. By obeying and following God's commandment, they could build the kingdom of heaven. And then they were access, they could access the tree of life, which gives them eternal life. But as we know, they failed, disobeyed God's commandments. And then the tree of life, giving them eternal life, you know, were prohibited from them to eat. And in the old, new Old Testament, looking forward to the promised one to re restore the kingdom of God. And as we know, Jesus Christ came to restore God's kingdom. And he came as, a, as, as the king, and he started to gather the disciples, the people, in the kingdom of God. And he obeyed all the laws of God, and he crucified on the cross. He died and obeyed. And now we are access the eternal life, the tree of life, giving us eternal life. The passage we just read are the eight blessings, so-called the Beatitudes of God. Eight blessings of Jesus Christ, and they are characteristics of the people who belong to God's kingdom. You know, each country has different values and characteristics. For example, some values and characteristics of American culture include independence, privacy, equality, informality, achievement, directness, and future orientation. And Korean have some different characteristics. They are diligent and hard work, filial piety, and humbleness. And each country, they may have their own characteristics for their kingdom. And these eight blessings of our Lord Jesus Christ, Beatitudes are characteristics and values of those people who belong to God's kingdom. It all begins with the state of heart and ends with result conditions. The state heart, heart state 
it begins the first blessing, poor in spirit. That's your heart condition of people belong to God's kingdom. They're total bankruptcy of your spirit. There's nothing you can really boast before God. There's nothing you can do to save yourself. Poor in spirit. A resulting condition, you will inherit the kingdom of heaven. Heart state, blessed are who are mourn. You mourn for your sin, sins for the world, and the resulting condition, God will comfort you. And then all the others, heart state, blessed are meek, hunger for thirst, hunger and thirst for righteousness, who are merciful, who are pure in heart, peacemaker, who are persecuted for Christ. Those are heart state. And the resulting state, resulting conditions are inherit the earth. You will be filled. You will see God. You will be called the children of God. You will inherit the kingdom of heaven. These are characteristics of kingdom builders. These are given when you become children of God. It's not something you can earn. It is given. When you belong, believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, these characteristics follow. You become, if you have, you possess. You must possess these characteristics. And so this can be a great test for yourself, whether you are in God's kingdom or not. If you belong, if you have these characteristics in your life, you can for sure, you can say, yes, I belong to God's kingdom. You are blessed people. So God's kingdom has already established by Jesus Christ, but not yet fully completed. You know, when you go to heaven, you will experience this all, you know, full blessing from our Lord Jesus Christ. And then you will experience the all God's presence with you when we get to heaven. But on this earth, even though God created and God established through Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God, still not yet stage. Today, I'd like to focus on the six blessings. Six blessings, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Let's first examine the resulting condition, they will see God. How can you see God? Is there anybody have seen God? God is invisible. As scripture says in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 17, now to the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. And John 1.18 also says, no one has ever seen God. Invisibility is God's one of the attributes. If we go to heaven, we cannot see God face to face. We will see Jesus Christ, but God is invisible. But this does not mean he cannot be known. You know, there are many things in this world, invisible, cannot see, but we, sure, we, we, we are for sure they exist. For example, gravity. We cannot see the gravity, but I'm standing right here. I'm not flooring in the air. That proves gravity exists. Sound. We cannot see the sound, but that exists. Emotions, smell, taste, energy, electricity, wind, air, oxygen, heat, cold, radio waves, Wi-Fi, thoughts, and there are so many others. We cannot see, but we know they exist. Even though we cannot see God, eyes to eyes, but we know for sure God exists. God revealed himself to show us who he is. Unless he reveals himself, there's no way our human being creatures can see and experience his presence. 
So as we know, God reveals himself in two ways, through the nature and through the Bible. We call that general revelation and special revelation. In general revelation, nature, God reveals himself, his glory, his mighty power. Yesterday I talked with my wife and she shared uh, a conversation with her uh, friend visiting uh, in Jeju Island. And the friends shared, sh sending a photo of sunset in Jeju Island. That was so beautiful. And her eyes got wet because of the beauty of nature God created. We often we wonder, amazed, how God created this beautiful universe. And then our brigade did a, uh, a spiritual strength assessment uh, with uh, about 1,400 soldiers. And one of the questions was the relationship with the nature and your spirituality. And about 84% of soldiers mentioned they have a close relationship that helps them to grow spiritually. Even there are many soldiers not religious, not Christians, but they know through this nature, by observing and seeing and experiencing this nature, they know God exists. God's power displays. In Romans chapter 1, verse 20 says, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power, and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood for what has been made, so that people are without excuse. In Old Testament, God chose to reveal himself in various ways, as you, as you know. Sometimes through the wind, through the cloud, through the fire, through the prophets. In New Testament, the scripture, scripture says God revealed himself through his son, Jesus Christ. Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 says, Jesus Christ, the image of the invisible God. So when Jesus Christ, walking on the earth 2,000 years ago, that was God, and people have seen God through Jesus Christ. And then as Jesus Christ was ascended to the heaven, he promised he will send the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit in Acts 2, you know, came down on earth, and he dwelt among the believers, among the people, kingdom of God. And the first John chapter 4, verse 12 says, No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love made complete in us. And as we obey and follow you know, God's word and loving each other, if the God is not seen, invisible, you know, we can see God. We can see God's love. The Holy Spirit works. We can experience the love of God. So it is a resulting condition that you are able to see God's glory through the nature and through the word of God. How is that possible? Because of that, your heart state, that is possible. You are able to see and experience and listen to God's word and voice. That is possible because of your heart state. Because your heart state is what? Pure in heart. Because your heart is pure, those are possible. You know, those who are not in the kingdom of God, those hearts are not pure, they cannot see God through this nature. Instead, they change that to worship them. Worship the moon, stars, the trees. They don't see God through their nature. If they read the word of God, if they not belong to God's kingdom, they cannot understand what the word of God says. But people who belong to God's kingdom can see God through this nature, can understand what the Bible says. Why? Because, we are, because of our heart state. Because our hearts are pure. Are you, are you guys are pure? Of course, we know we are all sinners. We cannot be perfect. Romans chapter 3, verse 10 says, There is no one righteous, not even one. So it is impossible to attain sinless stage in this life. 
but your heart becomes pure because of the blood of Jesus Christ. 1 John chapter 1, verse 7 says, If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ purifies us from all sin. Not because of your righteousness, not because of your good behaviors, but because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Blood because of the righteousness of Jesus Christ. We often focus on the blood, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, the last moment, moment of Jesus' life. We often forget about the three, three years of his life on the earth, his righteous living, perfect living. He lived that righteous life for us and you and me. That really count in place of we can, because we cannot live that sinless life. He lived that life for us. And he, when he died on the cross, he paid the sins for our sins. He paid the sin, the penalty for our sins. So his all 33 years, life matters. He gave all his life to make us pure in our heart so that we can see God. That is the kingdom builder's identity. After you accept Jesus Christ as your, as your Lord and Savior, what happened? I remember when my brother, long time ago, received Jesus Christ, received the Holy Spirit, experienced him, and then he shared, when even wind, you know, passing by, he said he experienced, he felt the Holy Spirit touching his heart. And every moment when you receive Jesus Christ, that's very fresh, loving, first love moment, you know God is with you. Experience amazing things in your life. What about now? Are you experienced as Chaplain Lee shared as he prays, how much time do you experience the presence of our living God? Are you still seeing and feeling the presence of our Holy Spirit in your life. Our Christian life, even we belong to the kingdom of God, I see a lot of Christians, including me, up and down. And sometimes I feel, where is God? And I hear a lot of Christians saying, where is God in this moment? I don't see him. And I experienced in my life, when I was stationed at Seattle, I woke up in the middle of the night. There was big thunders and lightning and heavy rains and storms outside. I didn't know what happened to me. I felt so hopeless, helpless, and worthless at the moment. I lost all hope, and then I reminded myself, hey, you are a chaplain, you are a pastor. Why? What happened to your faith in God? And then I realized myself, I don't have anything, all of them, nothing. Where is God at the moment? You know, it took a while for me to recover, restore my faith in God again, but there were moments in my life it was really hard to trust in Him, really bottomed down in my life. And then question to myself, am I belong to the kingdom of God? Where is my heart state? Am I still pure? Can I see God? Am I belong to the kingdom of God? Don't you have that kind of moment in your life? Sometimes you guys, you know, you guys going down the hill and quite having that, that kind of question. But please remember, your righteousness is not by your behaviors. You became pure not because of your righteousness. You are pure because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Because you are living in this not yet kingdom, we experience all those things in this life. Let's imagine that there is a very serious virus 
in the world. Of course, we are going through coronavirus. Let's imagine there is more serious virus going on. If you get it, you get sick, and at the end, you die. But if you get fully vaccinated, if even you get infected by the virus, you get a little sick, but it doesn't hurt you fatally. Sin is like the virus. If you have it, you know, we are all sinners. If you have that sin, you are spiritually ill and will die, separation from God. Accepting Jesus Christ means his blood cleanses your virus, bad viruses, sins, and you are purified. You are cleaned. You are fully, fully, fully vaccinated. Of course, in this life, you can get infected by sin. Then you feel a little distance from the Lord. You're spiritually ill. But sin, the Satan, cannot fatally fail you. They cannot take you from, take, they cannot take you from the kingdom of heaven. They cannot take you from the, your heart state pure in heart. They cannot take you from the you belong God's people. But even though you are still, you are, you are in the kingdom of God, Satan can still harm you. There are increased COVID cases in Korea, and having the highest level of protection in Korea, in Seoul and Gyeonggi province, and there are multiple variants in virus, alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. And these variants seem to spread more easily and quickly. And don't underestimate that the Satan will tempt the believers when it many, with many different variants. They get stronger and stronger and stronger. As the best way to protect yourself from current virus is having the mask, having social distance, and wash your hands, even if you are vaccinated. And we are, as we are living in this you know, sinful world, you know, we need our spiritual mask, space from sinful world, and confessing your sins as you're washing your hands to protect yourself from the sin and Satan. Even though you belong to God's kingdom, there are Satan everywhere with many different variants. You need to keep pure all the time from sin so that you can see the glory of God. You don't have to worry when you go to heaven, all these things. But as we are living in here, not yet kingdom of God, we need to be, give, be careful. Please remember this word pure, acronym pure, P, place, P, place. It's like having social distance, having your you know, distance, have your own space, place, place with God, one-on-one -on -one with God. Heaven will be a perfect place. You are not bothered by anything, but as you are living on the earth, you will be bothered, interrupted with so many things. So you've got to find a place you can spend one-on-one -on -one where you feel safe and quiet. I think that Satan most attacked, one of the tactics, Satan's tactics is to make you busy, not to spend time with God. Then he can spread the virus very quickly. But you gotta find a place, quiet place with God. I believe that is very crucial. Because Jesus Christ in Mark 1, 35, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he play, prayed. If Jesus needed a solitary place, I believe we all need a quiet place, one-on-one -on -one with God. Second, U P U, undivided heart. In that place, give your undivided heart. Set aside all your worries and agendas for the day. I'm sure you have many things going on in your life, in daily life. 
your children, relationship, work, business, and all the worries you have to worry about. But at the moment, with God in that place, give undivided heart. Psalm 24, verse 4 says, The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. Now you give only one undivided attention to God. And James 4, 8, Purify your heart, you double-minded. If you want, if pure, purity of your heart meaning, as one uh, theologian says, purity of heart is to will one thing to will one thing, to think of our Lord Jesus Christ. And third, R, read God's word. Read God's mind. Listen to God's voice. It's not time to you to talk at this moment. Just try to you know, listen to God. Lord, I'm here to listen to you. And read as you read God's word. Open your minds. Try to listen what he says to you. And E, experience God's glory. Experience God's glory. As you do this pure, find a quiet place, one-on-one -on -one with God. You give your undivided attention to God. And read the Bible and read God's word and read, try to read God's mind. And you will experience amazing glory of God. You know, my quiet place is my office. I go a little bit earlier in my office and open my curtain there is a big, you know, giant pine tree in front of my office. And I see, and sometimes, you know, birds visit, and then I experience what a wonderful, what a great God I serve. And I try to read God's word, try to read, listen. That is kind of extra dose of my vaccine. You know, I got already vaccinated, but as I practice those daily, that gives me extra dose of vaccine extra give me strength to go through the rest of my day. Pure, P-U-R-E, is getting an extra dose of vaccine. You get stronger spiritually. Because there are so many variants of Satan's virus, so-called temptations of Satan, you need pure, P-U-R-E, in your daily lives. In this world, we need a spiritual mask, distance from sin, and confess our sins. But when we get to heaven, we will see our king face to face. No mask needed, no distance needed. We'll hug each other. And there's no need to confess our sins. But until then, until that glorious day, let us keep ourselves pure, find a place, quiet place, give undivided attention, and read God's word, listen to him, and experience God's amazing grace and love, and you will see our living God. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the, this wonderful gathering together. Father, sometimes we are bottom in this life. But Lord, we know that you're still there. You're still there with your presence. Father, help us to understand and see your glory through this nature and through your word because we are pure in heart. Father, thank you so much. What a blessed people we are. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.